Well, friends and enemies, welcome back to Gatawana TV. Uh, it's April of 2021, and I'm out doing some spring scouting right now, uh, mainly for deer. But since I'm out here and I have a turkey tag coming up in a few weeks, um, and a half scouting for turkeys as well. But uh, main focus is deer right now, spring scouting. Um, I know some people are getting after me, getting on me for. Wanting to see my video of Mini, the buck I shot this past fall, 2020 archery season. Um, and <clears throat> before I do that, I feel like I need to go back and post um, my buck from 2016 that I called the Big Ten. Because even though they're four years apart, uh, they're definitely linked in a way. So um, and spend some time editing that video from... 2016 and unfortunately when I started doing that I realized that uh, I lost quite a bit of footage files were corrupted or bit rot or whatever the hell went on but I have video or had videos both on my video camera and different GoPros that I had at the time that are no longer playable so it's pretty unfortunate I'm kind of pissed because it would have helped put the story together kind of really show the timeline of events and kind of pull that whole story together. So I'm working with what I have to get this video done. So it may not be the most linear or tell the best story, but um, it's what I have to work with right now. So uh, hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, just real quick <clears throat> as well. So back in 2016, I had a few different good bucks I was after in different areas. Um, my number one buck I called Mondo. And this is at the time, the bucks that I knew or were around or kind of had an idea of how big they were. So I had Mondo as number one. I had Baby Mac as number two. Then I had a Buck Gager as number three. But within 2016, I realized how big Gager was. And then he quickly bumped up to number one and kind of became a buck I was obsessed with for the next three years. Um, so Gager was number three at the beginning of the year. And then, uh, the buck I called the big 10, which, uh, this video is going to be about, um, was my number four buck that I was after. So, uh, with that, get right into it. And, uh, we'll take a look at my video of the big 10 from 2016. And I just drank a Yava monster a little while ago. And as I'm walking in here, it's kind of getting the metabolism going, so I really need to poop, so check her out. All right, so back in 2016, um, I hunted opening morning, didn't see a deer, scouted midday, and then I uh, went to a different area the afternoon for opening day. Again, didn't see a deer. So went to a different area on Sunday the next morning and got in well before light, and right at first light, I didn't see a deer, but I saw a black squirrel. And I've always wanted to shoot a black squirrel, whether it was a gun, bull, whatever. I just always wanted to shoot one kind of on my bucket list, if you will. And I see this black squirrel coming. But because it was so early in the morning, um, I didn't want to ruin my hunt. So I decided to pass the black squirrel. I uh, didn't see a deer again. Um, but just as I'm packing up at about 10 o'clock, all of a sudden here comes this black squirrel. So I put an arrow back on. I figure I might get my chance here, so let's see what happens.
Well, folks, that was very stupid of me. I tried to get my trophy black squirrel. And I hesitated for a second while I was at, when he was on the ground. I had a decent shot. And he was behind a bunch of shit. And he was directly right in front of me. After holding by, back for like two minutes, I took the shot and fucking missed point blank. Well, it was really until about the fourth week of the season when I actually saw my first deer. Um, like I mentioned, I was hunting you know, some specific deer. I wasn't just hunting deer in general. I was hunting a couple specific bucks. So basically I would hunt in the morning based on what I'd see, which up to that point was nothing. I would then spend uh, midday scouting either that area or different areas, and then I would bop in the afternoon to um, a different area after one of these different bucks. And... You know, during that time of year, I'm primarily just a weekend warrior. I'm not using vacation during the week early in the year. Um, <clears throat> so I'd maybe get three sits, you know, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning. And then Sunday after the morning sit, I would pretty much um, scout until dark and then drive four hours back home. So really trying to learn these different areas, learn what I can uh, about those different bucks. And that's kind of the whole game plan. If I really had a game plan, I was just trying to learn. Uh, back then in 2016. Well, boys and girls, welcome back to God I Wanted TV. I'm your host, Chris Arnick. It is Saturday, October 8th, and I've been deerless until today. I've had about six sits so far. It's had opening weekend, second weekend. Didn't see a deer at all. Um, then on the last day, So I saw my first year of the season, October 8th, and October 9th was going to be a different wind. I didn't want to sit in the same area in the wrong wind. So I kind of stayed in that general area and moved to a different location and ultimately didn't see anything again. Deerless. Well, boys and girls, it's a pretty uneventful sit. It's October 9th, Sunday. I saw one small buck. About quarter after seven, he was on the grass, probably 60, 70 yards away. I only saw it for a split second. Looked up, saw antlers out there, thought, ooh, there's a nice buck, and put the binocs up, looked like a small, either a year and a half or maybe a two and a half, eight pointer, little basket rack, it looked like, and only saw him for about five seconds, so then he was gone. So, uneventful, disappointing. I'm actually freezing. I did not dress warm enough. I thought for sure the deer would be moving today, but I guess not. So, time to pack her up. 
check the camera, and then uh, go check some other cams, do some scouting. So check it later. So after finally seeing my first deer on, Octo on October 8th, I spent the entire next weekend, I think it was like October 15th or 16th, uh, just scouting the entire time. So I started getting into better deer sign. I thought I was getting closer to where at least one of these bucks uh, was living. So on around October 22nd, um, I had a had an encounter with a decent buck at a stand I called uh, the Quick Stand. So let's check that out real quick. So as I'm crossing these areas off the map, um, I go into a different area. Um, it's my birthday, October 29th, and I go in for a morning hunt. And even though it is public land, um, I got a real nice birthday present. See the guy drive in with his UTV. Don't know what he was doing, but uh, you can see the nice present that he left me, you know, about 100 or 200 yards away. So check this out. Not really sure what this guy is doing. He's got no shirt on and big overalls. He pulled up at 8.30, walked in the woods with a crossbow, walked out at 9 o'clock with no shirt on. <laughs> and then he might have shit his pants. So after the incidents with poopy pants, I totally pulled out of that area, relocated. And I'm like, all right, I'm, it's the right time of year. It's October 29th. I'm going to dive into what I think kind of the core area is where I think, you know, one of these bucks are living. And I'm going to get in there for the afternoon hunt. I really didn't want my first time in there to be in the morning. I wanted to give myself, you know, daylight and you have a day with some wind where I could actually get set up, you know, hang my stand and everything quietly and have a good first sit this first time going in there. So um, I did. Um, I had a couple small bucks come through that I could have shot. I didn't want to obviously and right at last light um, I had a mature buck come through it was kind of right on the edge of shooting light when he was coming through I couldn't get a real good look at him I could just see that he had he was a look like a typical 10 pointer with long tines so I'm like okay, it's either a gagger or the big 10 and right as he was at kind of the edge of where I could see him because it was kind of last light he just let out this super loud deepest glutteral grunt I've ever heard just just ripped it up it was crazy and because it was so dark I didn't want to call at him because I'm like well if he does come in there's probably no chance I'm going to get an ethical shot at, a, at him it would have been a complete blob shot probably well after shooting light so not going to take that so I decided okay I'm just going to let him walk by and and that's what he did so I'm like okay I had a great hunt I want to get back in here super early in the morning <clears throat> to beat any possible deer coming back through this area to get to the bedding area so uh, that's my plan so then the next day I went in, it was um, October 30th, and had another good encounter, so here we go.
So unfortunately, I didn't get a shot at that buck. Um, he's basically like two steps away from actually getting into an, a window where I could get a shot at him. Um, what I think happened is that even though I had the right wind for the stand, um, I think it was swirling. And I think he ultimately, you know, caught my wind a little bit and he did what big bucks do. And, you know, he didn't snort or anything or take off. He just, he just did a 180 and slipped right out of there and just... You know, that's what big bucks do, in my opinion. Mature bucks, when they wind you, they don't want to draw attention to themselves, and they just slip out of there the same way that they just slipped in. So, um, it was a good hunt. I had two good sets, you know, two days back to back, but unfortunately, the weather forecast after that day was going to be, for the next seven to ten days, was going to be in the high, in the mid to high 70s in the complete wrong wind. So, I knew that I wasn't going to get back to that area for at least the next week. Um, so I waited until the weekend of 11.5, so I'm like, I'm not going to use any vacation, even though I just had two good sits. It's not worth using vacation and sitting a spot in the wrong conditions. So on 11, the weekend of 11.5, I'm like, okay, I'm going to scout out some other potential areas just to cross more areas off the map or, you know, try and learn something new. And during one of those scouting missions, I found the biggest shed and probably will be the biggest shed I've ever, ever found in my life. Um, <clears throat> I didn't realize it right away, but ultimately I did realize it was Gagger's shed from the year before. So I'm hunting 2016. This would have been his shed from 2015. And it made me realize that, wow, this buck is way bigger than I originally thought he was. I didn't think he was, quote, that big, uh, but he was a giant. So let's take a look at this 82-inch typical 10-point shed. So after finding that shed and having two good encounters, um, you know, within a short time frame, I knew that the very next opportunity to have good weather, have the right wind, I had to be in the stand. So I went back to work on November 7th and the very next day, which had been November 8th, 2016, it was actually election day, 2016, was Trump versus Hillary. And I've always been a person that's always voted every single time in my life, but you know, with, with those opportunities that I had and the weather forecast coming up, I knew that I had to be in the stand. It was too late to fill out an absentee ballot. You know, I couldn't waste my time at the poll. Like I knew I had to be in the tree. So November 8th is supposed to be 10 to 15 degree temperature drops. It was wind switching to the north after about 10 days of being from the south. I'm like, I have to be in the tree stand. I need to use a vacation. I just need to be there. Like sometimes you just know. So I pleaded with my boss, I'm like, you have to give me off. Let me take a day of vacation, even though we were super busy at that time of year. And thankfully he did. So I worked 10, 11 hours that day, um, went home, kind of repacked all my stuff, got everything organized and slept for two hours. And I left at midnight to basically drive across the state uh, to get to where I want to hunt. So even with those perfect weather conditions, um, I got in the stand super early. You know, it rained, so I got in there extremely quiet, hung in the stand, uh, set up probably a good hour before shooting light. Um, right away, I had a, a doe or a small buck come through. It was too dark to really see what it was. But then, ap but then after that, um, it was extremely slow for like the first hour to hour and a half of the morning. Didn't see a deer, didn't hear anything, nothing. So I decided to do an aggressive rattling sequence. Um, so I uh, rattled aggressively, did some loud grunts, um, and kind of stood ready for the next 10, 15 minutes. Didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. So I sit down, kind of just settle in again. I'm kind of looking to my left, and I hear one twig snap, lightly, not very loud. So I'm like, oh. So I turn slowly to my right, and I look. And there's the Big Ten at 40 yards coming coming straight at me. And he's coming fast. So I barely had any time to, had luckily had the GoPros on already. So the GoPros were already on, um, which I lost the footage, as I mentioned. So um, barely had time to get up, grab my bow, swing my video camera, and hope, just kind of point it where I thought he was going to come to and get the shot. So here we go.
Go down. Right there is where I last saw him. Holy fuck, is my hand shaking? That tree, not the green one, but that mature tree right in there. That's the last place I saw him. He'd be straight north of me. He's fucking running hard. I didn't hear a crash, but it's kind of windy. I just heard a little stick snap. I was looking to my left to the south. I heard a stick snap back behind me to my right. In the northeast of me, and I turned on looking. Big Ten was right there. He was probably, I mean, he was within 40 yards by the time I saw him. I had my video camera turning the wrong way. I saw a deer, big rack, turn and grab my bull. I just swung the camera because he was in the real thick stuff. I knew that he wouldn't see me. So I swung it. I have no idea if I got it on video or not, or if he was even in the frame. I thought it looked like a good shot, but I definitely did not get a pass through. I thought it looked height-wise good. I thought it was good. I mean, if it was, if it was back, if it was only back to the liver, I would think. Definitely not guts. <sighs> Fuck. I hope he's down, baby. I hope he's dead. So after the shot, I mean, the shot looked good. The buck took off running real hard. Um, I didn't hear him crash, didn't see him fall. So I waited before I went down and looked for blood. Um, when I got down to the hit site, Unfortunately, it looked really bad. Um, the blood was extremely dark, very, very dark blood. And there's actually like soybeans in the blood. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I freaking gut shot him. I just, I just couldn't believe it. I was sick. So I didn't go any further. I grabbed all my stuff. I backed out. I didn't have cell phone service where I was. So I really couldn't let any of my buddies know or anything. So I packed up, got back to the truck, uh, looked at the video again. I videoed it on my phone and texted it to a few of my buddies, you know, consulted with them, consulted with them, you know, over the phone, a couple different buddies. And everybody thought that, okay, you smoked them, you smoked them. <clears throat> but I wasn't sure, wanted to be safe. So I did have a buddy that offered to basically drive across the state and help me track because he knew it was one of the big bucks I was after. So about four hours later, uh, he got to where I was. We then had time to watch the video again in the motel room on a, on a bigger TV, and we were both in the mindset that, okay, he's definitely dead. So uh, from there, let's pick up the track. So when I was consulting with some of my buddies, uh, my friend Josh was like, man, you smoked them. You know, you might not have good blood for the first 50 to 150 yards, but it looks like he's going to open up, you know, where you hit him. So as me and my friend Brock uh, were tracking, you know, the first 50 to 100 yards, really, there's it it was barely just specks of blood. It was very, very hard to track. But after we kind of got to the 150-yard mark, all of a sudden he just opened up and there was like blood everywhere. And as soon as we got you know, that first huge pile of blood, I started feeling a heck of a lot better. I mean, it was, it was definitely a roller coaster saying, okay, you smoked him. There's hardly any blood. He's, you know, you gut shot him. 
But now you get to the point where, you know, you're starting to see really good blood. And you're like, man, he's dead. He's over this next little spot here. He's going to be dead. So let's see. All right, friends and enemies, welcome back to God I Want a TV. I'm your host, Chris Zarnick, and I am ecstatic right now. Found my buck with an awesome recovery with things to, with uh, Brock White and Camp to help. It was a tough track. The first 50, 100 yards, I was down in the dumps. I thought I gut shot him. Very little blood. He couldn't find the arrow because the arrow was still stuck in him. And found <clears throat> some chunks of guts right, right at the point of penetration and real, real dark blood. But good old my buddy Josh Beeman said, well, keep going. It looks like you smoked him. He should open up within 100 yards, and that's just what he did. Whole bunch of bubbles, real red, bright red blood, and he probably went 200 yards max, probably 150 yards, and he's dead. This is the big 10 I was after. You see his beams sweep all the way around on both sides. Not a huge spread, but he's got real nice long tines. No brows. He must have broke them off. I had him one picture in the summer of him, and he had nice brow tines, but he must have broke them off and. Ever since that one picture, I ran about eight trail cameras in the area trying to get a beat on where he was going. And he'd show up maybe once a month on various cameras. And then late October, he showed up on a couple different cameras. And I saw him on October 30th. He came out, <coughs> came out to the field and just let out a real deep glutteral grunt when he came out. But it was in the shooting light, and I didn't want to call at him or anything because it was too dark. And the last week, the weather's been uh, horrible. 65 degrees, south, south winds. The whole time and went back to work on Monday and saw the forecast for Tuesday the 8th today it's supposed to be a 10 to 15 degree temperature drop and wind switching to the north and rain overnight so I said I got to get out there because I think something's gonna snap right away in the morning I saw a little buck just coming through right at first light and did some calling did some rattling at about 730 actually was pretty aggressive and did some long deep grunts and probably 10 minutes later I just heard a twig snap to my right turned and looked and he was 40 yards away coming straight in and smoked him at 25 yards and here he is big buck down baby gotta want it <clears throat> one other thing I requested off on Monday after working a 10 hour day repacked all my stuff washed all my clothes uh, went to bed at oh probably about 10 o'clock got up at 12 30 showered and had a three and a half hour drive to get here and take this big guy down so gotta want it baby work hard play hard